welcome back to your channel in this video we'll be discussing about the last problem of today's biweekly contest number of pairs satisfying inequality the problem states that you are given two array nums1 and nums2 each of size n and you are given an integer diff you need to find number of pairs i comma j such that i is less than j and this inequality is satisfied now obviously the you can't apply brute force because uh, the value of uh, n or the length of the array is 10 to the power 5 so i like if you apply brute force with two inner loops the complexity would become order n square which will not pass so now you have to do better than order n square and you have to make sure that you satisfy this two inequality now how to solve this we have solved this kind of problem in the past where we have uh, taken the approach of uh, rearranging this inequality so that i and j comes together and we see that whenever it happens it uh, uh, brings certain benefits so i will strongly encourage you to pause the video and try it yourself if you haven't tried it just uh, try playing around with this inequality and see if you can come up with something i hope uh, you have done that uh, let's look at what is the solution so we have given this inequality, right? Uh, nums1 minus num, nums1 of i minus nums1, nums1 of j should be less than or equals to nums2 of i minus nums2 of j plus the given integer diff. Now, if you bring everything to the left side, let's say you bring, uh, sorry, so let's say you bring everything to the left side, okay? Now, this is something that will like just uh, take nums1 together and nums2, uh, sorry, nums, just take i together and just take j together okay so whenever this kind of problem arises either you try to uh, bring nums1 together or you try to bring i together and you you will notice some uh, some magic happens there okay so in this problem we already have nums1 together and we see that if we have nums1 of i and nums1 of j together we don't have a choice rather than iterating over i and j uh, separately so now we have what we have done we have separated out i and we have separated out j okay and uh, we now see that this difference should be less than equals to div now what is this nums1 of i minus nums2 of i and here nums1 of j minus nums2 of j so whatever is coming now is coming in this pair so let's just uh, form a new array nums where nums1 of nums of i should be nums1 of i minus nums2 of i okay so now once you form this new array nums what you will see you have to find this particular inequality like you have to solve for this particular inequality basically this and i should be less than equals to j uh, or i should be less than j okay so that's what the problem is now reduced to so notice what we have just done, we have just taken i together and replaced nums1 of i minus nums2 of i with the new array nums. And now the problem is reduced to this particular problem. This is a very standard problem. Uh, again, I will encourage you to pause the video and try give it a try yourself. And if uh, I would discuss one very interesting solution of this problem in this video, and there are various possible solutions. For example, you can solve this same problem using segmentary or any other kind of sorted data structure. So I will encourage you to pause the video and solve it yourself. Now, assuming that you have done that, let's uh, continue. So now what we have to do, we have to just uh, solve for this particular inequality. So let's see how to do that. Now, one possible approach to solve this kind of uh, inequality where we have some inequality over i and j and order matters. So just one thing, like if order doesn't matter here, let's say uh, this i less than j would not have been there. We can sort the array and simply find whatever we want. Like we can simply find any equality by just sorting the array because we can apply binary search there. So because the array can't be, because the, the order of indexes matter, we can't actually sort the array. So let's say, uh, let's just assume that order doesn't matter. Let's say the i less than j was not there. So what we could have done to solve this inequality, we can just sort the array and see that, okay, I uh, nums1 of i minus nums2 of j is less than equals to div. So we can just take nums1, nums2 of j to the right again and just solve for, like, and just, and just uh, 
do a binary search for i by just iterating over j. We will fix j, and for each j, we will do binary search to find proper i. So that's what we have we have to do if array like if array could have been sorted. But because order matters, we can't sort the array. So now one classical way to solve the solve this kind of problem is to use divide and conquer. What we can do, we can divide the array into smaller pieces and then conquer the array. So basically, this smaller pieces, every smaller pieces here, like this smaller piece, will denote what would have been the answer if this is the only array. Similarly, this will say what would have been the answer if this is the only array. So now we got how many indexes are there which satisfy this inequality in this array. Similarly, we got how many indices are there which satisfy this inequality in this array. Now, what is remain? How many indexes i are there here and j are there here which satisfy this inequality? Notice that j, like we already know all the answer for this array. So basically, we don't need to find the cases where i and j both lies in this particular uh, part of the array. Similarly, we already know the answer of minus 2 comma 9. So we don't need to uh, solve for case where i and j both belongs to this particular piece of the array. So what we need to solve for is i belongs to the first array and j belongs to the second array. What are the possible combinations where this uh, condition is satisfied? So if we could answer this, basically divide and conquer can be applied anywhere where you can merge the, uh, like dividing part is simple, right? You can just divide the array. The only uh, tricky thing or the only uh, challenging thing in dividing conquer algorithms is to come up with a approach to conquer the arrays. Basically, you know what is the answer for this array. You know what is the answer for this array. Now you have to come up with an algorithm that would help you merge the answer for these two efficiently. Again, you can't iterate over each of these array. Otherwise, the order, the complexity would again shoot up to error and square, which you don't want. So you have to find an efficient way to merge these two uh, pieces efficiently. By efficiently, I mean uh, less than order n square, right? Um, in some form of n log n or something like that. Okay. And uh, once you find such algorithm, you can say that you can apply divide and conquer in that particular problem. So in this case, we like let's just solve for this particular criteria. Let's say i exists here and j exists here. Can we come up with some algorithm which will help us uh, find out how many possible i comma j pairs are there such that i belongs here, j belongs here, and this inequality is satisfied. So now i belongs here. Okay. So what uh, first of all because i belongs here and j belongs here we and i and j doesn't belong to the same part of the array we can sort the array like we can actually sort this part of the array and we can actually sort this part of the array because they both are completely separate okay we could not have do that in the previous case with the entire array because order matters here and i and j like they say you have to find the answer for this big array i and j can belong to this array itself but here what what the case is i belongs to this particular piece and j belongs to this particular piece so we can actually sort the array so let's say we sort the array let's uh, just assume that uh, six was not okay so let's assume that six is not here and six uh, let's clean this up a bit so Let's say 6 is not here and we sort the array and 6 comes here. So this is the new array. Okay. And this is already sorted. Now what you have to do, we have to uh, find all ij pairs so that i belongs to the first array and j belongs to the second array. And this condition is satisfied. Now let's just take uh, this thing on the right side. What we will get, we will get that nums of i should be less than equals to nums of j plus diff. Okay. So, uh, for a j, let's say you are like how many possible j's are there? Two possible j's are there, right? So let's say you iterate over all the j. Now, once you iterate over all the j, let's say you are at minus two. Okay. Now you have to find all possible i without iterating over all the i's. That's what you have to do. So now 
if you fix the j you actually fix the right hand side this entire thing is fixed right let's say diff is uh, 5 just for example so if diff is 5 what is the right hand side of the inequality right hand side would be minus 2 plus 5 which is 3 so what you want you want nums of i such that it is less than equals to 3 so in a way you want to do binary search here okay sorry for this uh, so this 2 is also not there this 2 should come here okay so now or maybe let it be here okay so now you have minus 3 2 6 you have to find num all the i which is less than equals to 3 because the array is sorted we can do a binary search what we need to find we need to find all the nums of i which is less than equals to 3 we can just simply do a upper bound upper bound will uh, give this particular point and we can say that okay my uh, these two elements are less than equals to 3 so what we what we can say for this j there are two possible i so we'll just add two to the answer okay now we have uh, done this for this particular j now what we can do we can do the similar thing for uh, 9 as well so let's say j is now 9 and diff was 5 so 9 plus 5 is 14 okay so what we need to do we need to find all the i which is less than equals to 14 we can again do binary search because that is sorted and we can see there is no element uh, like the, all the elements are less than 14 so we can just add 3 to the answer so hope this solution makes sense but basically we already know what is the answer for this we already know what is the answer for this and we calculated there are five indexes possible which in which i belongs to this and j belongs to this and finally we know here we know here we know cross as well so finally we get the answer for the parent one so because we know a merge algorithm we can apply by we can apply divide and conquer so let's uh, what we can do we can uh, initially we have uh, this uh, one array let's clear this entire thing up so hope you get the uh, how we can do merging part okay so now assuming that you can do merging part what we can do we can divide the array let's say we divide a uh, uh, simple uh, what if, like what we divide during merge sort we will divide them the same way we divide the array 2 6 minus 3 minus 2 9 2 6 3 minus 3 minus 2 9 and then 2 6 okay now this one single element array are actually okay because uh, you need to find pairs so single element array would not contain any pair so the contribution of this single elements array would be zero so we know the contribution of all the single elements array okay now we have to merge this two so now once you like one while you are merging these two what you have to do uh, you calculate i and j and again diff is five so once you take this to the right nums of j plus diff which is six plus five which is 11 so you have to find all the nums of i which is less than 11 so there is one nums of i which is less than 11 so the cross piece where i belongs to the first piece and second j belongs to second piece the number of pairs is one so finally what is the answer for 2 comma 6 this answer would be 0 plus 1 plus 1 which is 1 so there are one pair possible for 2 comma 6 now similarly for minus 3 there is 0 pair now you just merge 2 comma 6 and minus 3 again uh, what would be the answer for this 1 because this is 1 and then plus 0 uh, this part and then plus whatever pairs are possible so that i belongs here and j belongs here okay so again uh, you do you iterate over all the j diff is 5 minus 5 uh, 5 minus 3 which is 2 you find all the elements which are less than equals to 2 there is only one element so there is only one pair possible with this particular j and there are no more j so we are done so one pair possible here so total two uh, two pairs possible for 2 6 minus 3 and uh, similarly when uh, you can calculate this and once you have the value here you can again apply the same algorithm to like you know this you know this and you can apply the same algorithm to find out uh, the pieces where i belongs here and j belongs here so you will get finally the answer for this so hope the entire solution makes sense let's look at the code which makes it more clear so as discussed we formed 
the nums array initially where nums of i is simply nums of uh, nums one of j minus nums two of j now we just call valid pairs with the like valid pair takes four arguments diff which is a constant will which will not vary nums which is the array which we just formed and l and r l and r basically uh, here you can see we are actually dividing the array right so instead of dividing the array if you remember in merge sort also we just take the indices indices which we need to consider so here also we take indices so l and r denotes which particular sub array we are looking at so if l equals to r it, me it means that there is only one element in the array so contribution of one element would be zero because we need to find pairs now after that what we have done is we first find the value for uh, left and then we find the value for right and then we find uh, the cross values basically i belongs to the left and j belongs to the right so we have done the same thing we called valid pairs again for the left part of the array we called valid pairs for the right part of the array we sum their values and now what is remain is to calculate the cross sum or the the number of pairs where i belongs to the left part and j belongs to the right part now for this as discussed we iterate over all the j now if we iterate over all the j we need to find all the i such which is less than equals to this right and uh, if you just just to uh, remind like this we just uh, take nums of j to the right so we need to find all the i which is less than equals to this so what we did we just did the upper bound and if there exists such index we consider this in our answer okay once we have this we have the actual result as well but now if you remember we have to we can only apply binary search if the array is sorted so what we could have done is we can actually copy everything from l to r and oh sorry l1 to r1 and sort the array because l1 to r1 is the first array and l2 to r2 is the second array so we could have sorted this piece and then apply this particular algorithm but we have applied the algorithm it means this particular piece should be sorted otherwise this binary search would not would not work so for for this particular piece to be sorted what i have done is i have merged like i have applied the merge sort algorithm so with this algorithm we are sure that l1 to r1 is sorted and l2 to r2 is sorted because this is simple merge sort algorithm right when merge sort algorithm what you do again divide and conquer you make sure that this is sorted and you make sure that this is sorted right so we have done the same thing we just make sure that this left piece is sorted and right piece is sorted and afterwards once we like once we calculate the value for this we merge these two and make sure that l comma r completely is sorted so this piece is coming uh, again like this piece is just an optimization in terms of space and time complexity you can very well avoid this piece and just sort the left piece and the right piece and complexity would stay intact okay so basically a log n factor will come but complexity overall your solution will pass so hope you get the solution if you have any doubts in this problem just post them in the comment section below i will be happy to answer and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you